anti-gun zealots will do anything they can to eliminate, yes, eliminate the Second Amendment. They will scare you. They will call you racist, but most of all, they will simply lie. Gun hater billionaire Michael Bloomberg's every town is the chief purveyor of the attacks on the Second Amendment with lies. It claims in a report released that there have been 203 school shootings since Sandy Hook. Liberal media outlets take that number at face value. We know it's bogus. The folks over at BearingArms.com proved it's bogus. They went through all 203 shootings listed by Everytown, and you will not believe what Everytown actually concluded was a school shooting. Look at this. Everytown listed gang activity near but not on a school campus in Chicago as a school shooting. A negligently discharged weapon during the cleaning process where no one was hurt was considered a school shooting. Also considered a school shooting, the negligent discharge by a school janitor who found a gun on campus, that too was deemed a school shooting. Those are just a few of the bogus examples of school shootings intended to make you believe your children were at risk. They even included a suicide on the list. Well, Bearing Arms did an honest, common sense assessment of each shooting and found that of the 203 listed, 44 actually met the definition of a school shooting, debunking every town's stunning claims that amount to nothing more than deceptive lies. Well, Bob Owens is with BearingArms.com. He's our guest. Bob, thanks for coming on. Always a pleasure to be here. So first off, how much work went into this? 203 shootings you had to go through, and I know you went through each and every one of them. I did. It. I thought it was going to be something I could knock out before lunch. It ended up being a 16-hour grind to go through each and every single one of them, uh, to look up the incident, to turn around and look through multiple media accounts to make sure that we were getting the most accurate information. And so when we compiled this list, we made sure to go through and provide a link so that each and every incident is documented so people can go back and check on my work. I'm happy to do that. Yeah, and, and I did it, and I clicked on most of those links, and, and you were spot on on every one of them. What's most upsetting to me is uh, every town included the Dallas shooting where five officers were killed, very near and dear to our hearts as we're based here in Dallas where we do this program from. The Dallas shooting was a war on police officers. It was an execution-style murder of five officers. They included that as a school shooting? They did. If, if you go through every town's list, they call it the uh, El Centro College shooting because the terrorist who carried out this attack parked in front of El Centro College when he opened fire and did most of his damage. He then shot his way through a glass door, went through the abandoned school library and ended up in an alcove uh, in the backside of the building. No students were ever hurt, no, uh, and to the best of my knowledge, none of them even saw this guy because it happened at 9 o'clock at night until 2 a.m. in the morning uh, when they finally took him down uh, with a police EOD robot and a charge of C4. Well, so in my mind, this is just another example of them trying to deceive people because they're trying to just add the most number of shootings they can that happen even near or around a school. But, but you said that when you went through this, you just took a common sense approach to what would be deemed a school shooting. And you didn't deem them all to be uh, egregious examples. Some of them were actually school shootings. What was the common sense approach that you used? Well, whenever we is just... American citizens hear the word school, sh school shooting, we get a, a certain mental image in our minds of some madman walking into a college or university or a high school or elementary school and opening fire in a classroom on students, on faculty members, and, and that kind of shapes what we generally view as a school shooting. So that was our broad criteria that we used, is, and, and we even threw in for the universities, shootings on, you know, outside of dormitories or in dorms, even if they were just armed robberies that happened on college campus. If we took those out, we'd had a number of shootings in. Most of these school shootings that we discovered were those on college campuses, um, usually around parking areas or near dorms. And so mostly they were robberies. They weren't a mad gunman going to randomly shoot up students and teachers. That's exactly correct. I, I know you had one example. There was a, a husband, an estranged husband goes on campus, tries to shoot his wife. They deem that a school shooting. And, and, and that's you know what they do. If it in, the basic criteria they seem to be working from is that they find the word school 
and shot in a Google search, uh, they would include it. You know, it doesn't matter if it was on campus, you know, if it was near campus, if it was a robbery, if it was a shoot, a drug deal carried out between gang members on a weekend on a, on a school basketball court, they counted that. And it's, it's very duplicitous, but it helps them pad their statistics. You, you know, I actually think every town did help us in one way by doing this, uh, this assessment, even though it was filled with, with lies and innuendo. Uh, it, it proved to me that teachers and faculty and on college campuses, if you can have campus carry, would protect citizens from any kind of shooting, school shooting, robbery, crime, whatever. Every town proved that, that an armed citizenry is a safer citizenry. I believe that a good number of those 44 that we deemed to be valid school shootings, especially some of the robberies on campus, may have been thwarted if uh, you know, older students, 21 and up, uh, were allowed to have firearms in the room. It would have made things much more difficult. It may have enabled some of the on attacks. We do know that some school shootings we had years had been put down by armed SROs on campus. Yeah. Uh, clearly, it's it's uh, safer when a good guy is around when there's a bad guy there with a gun. Uh, hey, Bob Owens, as always, tremendous work that you guys do over Bearing Arms. This, this study was really, uh, we needed it, and I thank you for it, and thank you for coming on and sharing it with us. Thanks for having me on. All right, you got it. I'm Grant Stinchfield for NRA TV. Thanks so much for watching.